Hello, I'm Matsubo George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring His truths to you. Now, this is a new week, and I'm trusting the Lord for mighty things to happen in your life this week. And that's why I'm bringing you the word of the Lord. Because you see, that is the thing that will propel you to bring into manifestation everything the Lord has said. Now, I've been talking to you about the spirit of prophecy. And I'm trusting the spirit of God that this week, that spirit will rest upon you mightily and cause you to fulfill the things that God has said concerning you. Before going to today's broadcast, I want us to release our faith right now and call for our daily bread. Are you ready? Say this with me, and I want you to release your faith in this and watch the miracle that's going to take place today. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, God has great things in store for you. And I've been telling you how by the spirit of prophecy, we bring things to pass on the earth that God has already said concerning us. And then I shared with you how your attitude is what determines how the spirit of prophecy will rest on you. Your attitude to the word of God, your attitude to the things that God has said. I gave you an example of Josiah. When the word of God came to Josiah, when the, the book of the law was read to him, the Bible says, hearing the things in that book, he tore his clothes and gathered the children of Israel to the temple and said, everybody listening to this word, attitude. And that was when the spirit of prophecy rested mightily on him. And he began to do everything that was written concerning him. Attitude is everything. What is your attitude to the word of God? When you hear the word of God, how do you respond to it? When you read your Bible, how do you respond to the things that you see? See, your response will determine everything. Meanwhile, God on his part will ever be faithful. So I told you last week, and I'm repeating it again today, we are all here to fulfill prophecies. You better know that and know truth. You are here to fulfill prophecy. Everybody on the face of the earth will fulfill prophecy. I'm telling you the truth. The question you need to ask yourself is whether you will fulfill the good word of the Lord or you will be part of those that will cause the good word of the Lord to come to pass. And the Bible lets us know that there is a book called the book of life. And I'll show you something in Hebrews chapter 10. Turn your Bibles there with me now. Let me show you this important scripture. Hebrews chapter 10 and from verse 5, speaking concerning Jesus, he says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared for me. Uh, a body has thou prepared me. In burnt offering and sacrifice for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Did you see that? Now, this scripture was picked out of Psalm chapter 40. David speaking there and he declared these words in prophecy. In the volume of the books, it is written of me. Now, Jesus here, the writer of the book of Hebrew was, was talking about Jesus and he related the scripture to Jesus. Meaning, Jesus didn't just come to do his own thing. He came to do the things that have been already written concerning him. When were these things written concerning him? From the foundation of the world, praise God. From the foundation of the world. 
Now listen to me. Our names, the Bible talks about the book of life. And the book of life was written from the foundation of the world. And listen, everybody whom God have ordained to come into this world have their names written in the book of life. It is not when you are born that your name is written in the book of life. It is not when you give your life to Christ that your name is written in the book of life. Your name was written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. That was when your name was written there, the Bible says. And then the Bible lets us know that there are people living in this world whose names were never written in the book of life. Say, how? Oh, yeah. Read your Bible. The book of Revelation chapter 17 or chapter 13 or 17. It spoke about those whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. It was never written. Not that it was written and then they, it got erased. No, it was never written. So there are people whose names were never written and their names will never be written in the book of life. Now that is truth you should know. But then listen to me. Everyone whose name is in the book of life, God has great plans for that person. Everyone whose name is in the book of life is here to fulfill prophecy. Now the book of life is not just a book of names, you know, list of names, not a list of names. It is a book that contains everything about your life, everything you will do in this life. You see, the Bible in, in, in Isaiah lets us know that God does things precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And I'm telling you this, every human being you see on the face of the earth, God have assigned a portion of his plan in them to fulfill. Now, I want you to get this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As long as you're on the earth, God will create space for you. But the fact that you're on the earth doesn't mean your name is in the book of life. But as long as you're on the earth, God is going to use you. I'll give you an example. We know Judas Iscariot, the Bible says, the one who betrayed Jesus. I can tell you authoritatively that Judas never had his name written in the book of life. You say, how can you say that? I I'm telling you the truth. I will now explain why. You remember Jesus speaking of Judas Iscariot. And then he said, one of you will betray me. And then he made a very powerful statement. He said, it is better for that one that he was never born. And that's a very strong statement to make by Jesus. Jesus said, it is better for that person who's going to betray me that he was never born. It would have been better that he was never born. Now, what does that tell you? That tells you that he was born and this was now his assignment in life to betray Jesus. Now, I ask you a question. Is that a good thing or not? Of course, you should know it's not a good thing because there is no inheritance attached to that. There is no blessing attached to that kind of assignment. Now we know that God has said that my thoughts concerning you, they are good and not evil. Now that statement was referring to everyone that God created. He says, my thoughts when I was creating you, concerning you, they are good and not for evil. He spoke about Jeremiah. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet. Think about it. Before you were formed in your mother's womb. <laughs> Meaning, I had already ordained that you will come. Meaning, I have you figured out. I have your name written in my book. Praise God. Now then, if God's thoughts concerning us are good, why then would he create one and all he will write about that one is that he will betray the son and then didn't give room for repentance, didn't give room for him to be reabsorbed and walk in the blessing. 
you need to understand these things. It may be hard for some of you, but this is plain truth. I always say this, think about it. Judas betrayed Jesus and collected money. Peter denied Jesus. Now, sometimes I need you to sit down and ask yourself this question. Whose, whose sin was more grave? If you need to interview the two of them, Peter and Judas, if you need to interview the two of them, and, and, and you sit them, sit them down and say, Peter, Judas, why did you do what you did? I can tell you straight. Judas will tell you, look, my mind was figuring that they cannot arrest Jesus. I've seen them try to arrest Jesus several times. And these guys have been bugging me and bugging me. They said they will give me money. I, I, I collected the money knowing that there is no way they are going to arrest Jesus. So he will tell you he was walking by an information in his heart. So I'm sorry. I, I didn't know it was going to go this way. I, I'm so sorry. Then you ask Peter, Peter, why did you deny Jesus? You are the one who God revealed to that he was the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the one whom he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Peter, why did you deny him when it mattered the most? What was going to be Peter's excuse? Unbelief. Judas will even tell you, I believed in him. That's why I betrayed him. Because I, I believed that there is no way they were going to arrest him. Now, you have these two people. The Bible said Judas was already a thief. He was always stealing from the back. So Judas had a character of naughtiness. And Peter is the one who has always defended Jesus. Now, what would you really call a betrayer? I think Peter's betrayer was harder to deal with than Judas. But guess what? Now, this is why I'm telling you this. Now, guess what? Jesus looked at Peter one day and says, Hey, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. And this is his plan. He wants to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. When you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Okay. And Jesus looked at him one day and says, you know, Peter had said, Master, there is no way you will enter. I will save you with my life. And Jesus said, will you really do that? Say, of course I will. He said, look, let me tell you now, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. I'm sure Peter will never, that, that can never happen. But when it mattered most, he did deny Jesus. But Jesus had spoken before and said, I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. That's what Jesus said about Peter. Then over to Judas, he says it was better for that person that he was never born. Now I'm telling you this, it wasn't a fluke that Judas was the one that betrayed Jesus. Sometimes people think it could have been any of the disciples. No, it couldn't have been any of the disciples. Jesus knew from day one who would betray him. And he said it, John said it, that he knew from the beginning who it was that would betray him. So when Jesus was choosing his disciples, he knew he had to choose one person whose name was not written in the book of life. One person whose destiny is not in God. Now, this is the warfare we face on the earth today. Now, some of you don't know this. Some of you don't understand this. So you don't even know how to live in this world. We are in a warfare. And this warfare is between the children of God and those the Bible calls the children of the devil. And when we say the children of the devil, we are not just talking about those who are not born again yet. There are some we think are born again who are actually the children of the devil. Meaning their names were never written in the book of life. It's tough statements to make, but I'm going to be, I'll see how the Spirit of God is going to help us get into this truth because it is so important that you understand this when we're talking about fulfilling prophecy here. You remember, Jesus said to Judas, what you are doing, do quickly. The Bible says that was when Satan entered into Judas and he stepped out to carry out the mission that he was assigned to do. From God? No, not from God. Praise God. 
but he, he was used by the devil easily. Why? Because his name was not in the book of life. So it matters those you keep around you. It matters the kind of friends that you have around you. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Praise God. I'm sure you want, yeah, Pastor, you need to share. We, 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 we will trust the Spirit of God. See how we can go into this. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you today that the good word of the Lord will be fulfilled in your life. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see your portion in the land of the living. And the spirit of prophecy will rest upon you today and cause you to begin to manifest the good things that God has written concerning you. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.